On this episode of NSFW Show, we are joined by somewhat famous magician Daniel Garcia, allegedly. Also, extremely talented voice actress and amazing human being Tara Strong slums it with us. We play Damn You Autocorrect, raise a ton of money for the Hartman House and a very, very good cause this Thanksgiving. It's all coming up along with musical guest Jackie Lipson on this episode of NSFW Show. Netcasts you love from people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for NSFW is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is NSFW episode 101, recorded on November 8th, 2011. Internet hosts are whack. This episode of NSFW Show is brought to you by Ford, featuring voice-activated sync app link. Now you can control select smartphone apps with your voice, so you keep your hands on the wheel and your eyes on the road. Check it out in the 2012 Ford Fiesta at Ford.com slash technology. And Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes on movies on your PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, or TV instantly. All stream directly to you, saving you time, money, and hassle. For your free 30-day trial, go to netflix.com slash twit. You got your sunrise, you caught a prize, you, you make me a Johnson. Party nights, summer whites, you, your friends and your Johnson. Rooster tails, water trails, you, your kids and your Johnson. Saturday nights, distant lights, you, your girl and your Johnson. And just like that, it is go time for NSFW, the new show full of wind, the new sauce for the webinars, the show that is nominally safe for work. I'm your host, Brian Brushwood, joined as always by my inimitable co-host, hold on, whoa, 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 stop the music, stop the music. The drinking game, you already have to get tanked. If you're following along at home, who had the over-under at 10 seconds into the broadcast, just Robert Young's video would totally drop off. So filling in for Justin Robert Young will be my new co-host, mm. Daniel Garcia. What is going on, Professor Garcicles? What's happening, my spockahead friend? <laughs> now, for people who don't know, you were you were uh, one of the original. This is amazing that this is your first NSFW appearance because you were on the very earliest episodes of the BB Live Show, including our fabulous Tech Fail episode where we did everything with uh, handwritten lower thirds and everything. We yeah, had man. you by by the phone. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, Daniel Garcia is one of the smart. Artist, most cleverest magical thinkers of this day. You've created routines that have been performed by David Blaine on national television. Mm -hmm. uh, you've consulted for who else? Uh, right now, uh, we're doing Cyril over in Japan. Right He's on. Four specials coming out. I finished up uh, Dynamo's uh, Magician Impossible series over in England. Right on. And uh, so that's what's going on now. Just, uh, okay, okay, okay please. This. I'm sorry. Is that the snoring <laughs> of the editor of iTricks when Justin Robert Young? <laughs> Hello, oh, Jerry. Oh, Brian, I'm so excited. Oh, he's <laughs> back. Nice of you. How, oh. how nice of you to bother he's to join back. us for the program. It's delightful oh, to see you, sir. Good Lord. You know, Brian, I'm really excited to have uh, one of the favorites of BB Live show, Daniel Garcia, on, on the first episode of NSFW. <laughs> uh, you know, he was so popular when we did BB Live show that now that we have our first episode, to have him on is really, really great. <laughs> Uh, hey, but this is uh, this is one of those fabulous episodes where we are overflowing with not only incredible guests but incredible talent because we are joined by the lovely and beautiful and talented Tara Strong. Yes. <gasps> Yay. Tara Strong, uh, if you go to your IMDb and you type in Tara Strong, uh, your eyes start to glaze over by the like fifth or sixth beloved franchise that you've heard her voice in. How uh, how did you get started doing the the, the voice talent for cartoons? Um, you know, I always knew that I wanted to be an actress, and I always did silly voices, even when I was four or five years old. And um, my first audition for an animated series was in Toronto, and it was for Hello Kitty. And I was 13, and I didn't know that animation voiceover was a career, um, but that was my first gig. And I did 20 animated series before moving to Los Angeles, and I've just been lucky that that's been my gig because it's so much fun. Well, and what impresses me is well, the incredible just, diversity of voices that you do and the d d incredible diversity of, of programming. When you meet people in mixed company and you want to latch on to something that you're sure that they've heard of, what are some of the big, the, the heavy hitters, the, the, the voices that you're almost certain they've heard you do? 
Well, I'd say for sure the Fairly Odd Parents is the number one. Everybody loves the Fairly Odd Parents. There's so much humor for adults and kids, and I watch it with my kids, and even though they know it's me, they laugh. Um, and everybody loves that show, and they love Poof on that show. Um, any little girl will tell you they love The Little Mermaid Part 2, and I got to play um, Ariel's daughter, Melody, in that. Um, there's tons of people that love Batgirl and Raven from Teen Titans, and the Powerpuff Girls is still pretty big. They, you know, play that on Boomerang a lot. That's right. You're Bubbles, aren't you? Bubbles. God, it's, it's, this her, is mind-blowing It just keeps, me. her list keeps going I and know. going. And she was like, <laughs> I was the pumpkin in the, the Spider-Man whenever it made that wheat <laughs> noise. That was me. She keeps going. It's incredible. No, I was the pumpkin. She does. Like, she like, would you yeah. please respect my career and yeah, not make up things? I, was, I, I, was, <laughs> I would not be caught dead playing a pumpkin, wasn't the pumpkin on a Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so so meanwhile, uh, part of the reason you're joining us is because uh, our friends over at the Hartman House are doing a big a big push right now. What for? Yes, um, Butch and Juliana, they're so wonderful, and they um, have an or organization called the Hartman House, and they would like to feed 500 families in Los Angeles for Thanksgiving. So I wish you all would donate. And they're trying to raise $5,000 so that everybody gets a turkey and all the stuffings, and uh, you can donate online at uh, www.hartmanhouse.org, and we can totally make that happen and feed all these families and make all the kids happy. Yeah, uh, in fact, John Tilton, the guy who uh, who reached out or, or helped set everything up, he set up a tinyurl.com slash nsfwturkey is the link right there. tinyurl.com slash nsfw is in all caps, but turkey is in lowercase. Uh, all right, Justin, what are we up to today, sir? Oh, we have a, uh, it's a full boat here this week, and, and gosh darn it, are we going to have a, a whole lot of fun, kids. Uh, we're going to play Damn You Autocorrect, of course, America's favorite fun game based on annoying things that happen when your phone thinks it's smarter than you. And we're going to, we're going to have fun with the, the, the lovely and talented Taylor Swift. Oh, well, yes, yes, just in time. I'm sure what he was about to say is the lovely and talented Tara Strong. We're actually going to see if we can create some characters for us. But uh, meanwhile, uh, everyone playing the home game, take a big old fat drink for one Justin Robert Young's internet crapping out. That's twice, two times. And I would like to point out for a change, it's not me and my Tom Warner. It's him and his Comcast. Mm -hmm. So eat that. So um, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Tara, you're familiar with that, that website, Damn You Autocorrect. Right? Yes. Okay, so obviously what happens is you type in a phrase and then, it, it, you know, everyone's phone hilariously corrects it to something that's totally incorrect. And then, uh, and then uh, you know, they post it up on the web. So what we're going to do is Justin has grabbed five different of the autocorrect conversations. And mm -hmm. if you don't mind, you guys are going to play the two characters having the conversation. And you're going to read the way it actually is written on, on the conversation. And then based on the conversation that you two have, uh, Danny and I are going to take turns trying to figure out what is the autocorrected word. What is the word that, uh, that went totally askew? Isn't that right, Justin? <laughs> Who's totally back now, and I'm sure has no... Isn't that right, Justin? Yes, Brian, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> um, I'll tell you what, I never felt more uh, upset about the fact that I ran over that gypsy woman. <laughs> She, yeah, you ran over the gypsy, and then just as she died, you walked out. You're like, oh, don't die on me. That'd be really embarrassing. And she goes, bad internet. And then she yeah. passed away. And so you're forever, forever cursed mm -hmm. to be dropped yes. off the line. Megabytes. <laughs> 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 but she did my face. Justin uh, Robert I'm Hext. Him, you autocorrect, right? Yeah, yeah. I explained the whole rules for that. We're ready to get started. But I don't know if you have to send something over to Tara for her part or what you guys want to do. No, no. Jammer B, uh, we can actually pull it right there up on the screen now, can we? All right. Jammer B will go ahead and call up the conversation. Now, um, I'm going to say that. Uh, we will go, I don't know who's going to go first. I guess, I guess, uh, you want to go first or you want me to go first? I'll let you go first. All right, I'll okay, go first. You're going to take first. the bull by the horns. Yeah, I will. I will lose by the horns. <laughs> Got it. Uh, all right, uh, Jammer, is there any way that we can get any, any more, uh, zoomed in on that, on that picture there? And then me and, and Tara, if you wouldn't mind, I'll, I'll read one side and you'll read the other. All right, and am I reading it in my voice or are you guys picking a fun voice for me? Ooh. Let's Ooh. surprise well, us. I'll tell you what. You, you want to know because we're gonna pick voices for you in in the next bit. So so well, what do you say? You just just go down your 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 your, your cavalcade of hits there, and and pick uh, one of the voices that you've uh, you, you're known for. Okay. Got it. All right. Uh, Jeremy, right. throw it up on the screen, and we're ready. 
All right, so I'll read, I'll read the white, you read the blue. Okay. Uh, did you tell mom and dad that we were going to a horny house tonight? A horny house? What the poop? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I definitely meant blank. <laughs> Wait. Oh, okay, keep it up there, Jammer B. Do I keep going? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> but yes, I told Dad. Ha ha. Uh, okay, so this is this is to me. Uh, I'm gonna say it's got to be a haunted house. I don't think mm. that it's a horny house. I was unless... gonna go with whore. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm go luckily it's my turn, and I'm going oh. with haunted house. Okay. Justin, uh, Brian, you are absolutely correct. Huzzah! Brian, one point to zero. That's one for me. All right, now you're out. You're on deck next. All right, next one. <laughs> You got the easy one. I know. I did get the easy one. That that's why so you always easy. go first. Always go first, because that's the easy one. All right. All right, Jammer B's printing up the next one here. And, uh, now, this... they, do, they do get progressively more difficult. Good, because that first one was way easy. Uh, all right. So, uh, 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 Tara, you can go ahead and, and read the, the, the green there, since that's pretty much uh, the only thing. And then for the red thing, just say blank in your regular voice. Ah. <laughs> uh... Sweetie, there's a one in ten chance any given guy is fat. <laughs> Blank. LMAO! <laughs> okay, that's a lot to go on. I have no context clues. You see that? Like, that's all I have is just that. I already know this one. I'm going to say it. I already know this one. Well, no, right. uh, Garcia gets a guess, and then, then you can get a chance to steal. But talk this one out. Garcicles, what do you think it could be? Mm. All right, so there's a one in ten chance that any guy uh, is, and it's going to be a small word. But it's not fat. And it's not fat or ass. So I'm going to say, let's see, sweetie. Well, what would that mean? Any given a, guy is ass. Hey, this is my turn, not yours. <laughs> I'm helping you, buddy. No, no. You can't not, just get along. One in, on, I'm trying to go. You're, you're making alone. Tara wait. Look at her. She's looking down right now at her phone because you you keep yapping, yappity yappity yap. Don't talk back. All right. I think it's going to be. I think it's a uh, gay. Wow. You would just go there just instantly out of yeah. nowhere. Bam. Oh, it is on the board. <laughs> There's a one in ten chance that okay. I didn't give a guy. Why'd you have five? We're competing against each other. <laughs> That's, no, we're all we're, we're on the show side. We are, okay, we are. all right, I'm ready. I'm ready for this. I'm gonna I'm gonna take it back. Yeah, you're both you're both on team good entertainment, and we're failing. <laughs> yes, I'm exactly. glad. I, I don't know how I just got that. That was amazing to me. Did you look at the chat room? There's a chat room. <laughs> That's always good. Awesome. <laughs> Probably because you're homophobic. <laughs> yeah, or it could be because you have a fixation. I just know my statistics. All right, are we ready for the next one? <laughs> uh, we certainly <laughs> are. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, Tara, yeah, you just read uh, read the white, I'll read the green. I'm super stoned for the movies. <laughs> Lol, blank. Yeah, LOL, I'm stoned for them too. <laughs> Stupid phone doesn't know me very well. <laughs> Mm. Uh, that one's easy yeah, that's, because I'm a that's big that's fan pretty, of the word stoked. Yeah, that's so it's easy clearly one. it's got to be I'm stoked for the movies. Yeah, that's what I'm going. Uh, it's actually Bram Stoker, is the correct. Uh, stoked, yeah. No. Uh, yep, stoked, stoked, stoked for, job, for the sir. win. There it is. That's, Good job, sir. that's two points for me. Good job. I Good thought job. you said they were getting, these were getting harder, Justin. Yeah, yeah, that was. They my... will. And you guys were supposed to guess what character I was doing. Oh. Oh no. Oh. That was wait, actually, wait. yeah, double bonus. Guess rewind, rewind. No, I got nothing. I got nothing can on that. I, I, I know. Yeah, can you do it again? Can you do it again? Better open that up to your chat room. You're going to get a lot of angry fans if you don't know who I'm doing right oh now. Oh, my God. The, the chat room is exploding with Raven. I it's got to be Raven. The pumpkin from <laughs> Spider Man. <laughs> uh, I don't think my fans are very impressed with you two right now. <laughs> oh. No, they, they totally are not. It's not my target audience. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, Justin, you ready? Uh, we are ready. Jammer B, please bring up the uh, tying one. Uh, by the way, uh, Garcia, if you don't get this, you're going to lose this game and my respect. Okay. Got it. Oh, who am I this uh, time? Uh, do you want to do white or the, or the green, Tara? 
Uh, okay, I'll do the white. Okay, no, go ahead. You do the white. You do the white. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, now, um, mind you, the, uh, the the blues there is just to take out a curse word because we can't <laughs> curse on the show. So gotcha. th those aren't the things that we're looking to get. It's only the red that you're looking to get. So here we go. Oh, I heard you met my fiance last night. Yes, and I can just tell. And can I just tell you, he is Hillary. <laughs> <laughs> what? How do you know? I'm like shaking right now. He's been denying it for months. I always had a feeling. How did you see? Oh God! You picked God, the wrong God. one. God yeah. damn it, damn it. Wait, what happened? Did you ever be show the reveal one? I think it's hilarious. Can I go ahead and say that real quick? <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, what what happened, Justin? What, what were we supposed to be seeing? Uh, you were supposed to have uh, hilarious blanked out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, it's okay. We can I'll do it again. We I'll can pretend, do it again. Yeah, let's pretend like I don't know what it is. Go ahead. No, no, that's it's not gonna. Wait, work. it's hilarious. It's, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna. Is work. it hilarious? You can't. You can't get for You can't. Get I'm gonna go ahead and, and say that's my fault. Was it I probably put the wrong. Thing you there. can't. Uh, no, you got nothing. You got nothing. I'm gonna but point now for you that. have to guess the character. Yeah, uh, guess, yes. the, guess the character though. All right, character and uh, uh, all right. Do you have? Do you, do you know what the, the character is? Was it the pumpkin from Spider Man? <laughs> oh, no, stop it! <laughs> uh, that is. Truffles? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that, that was really good. That's wow. good. That's Way good. Go. God, she does amazing. I'll tell you, uh, next time, uh, Danny, yeah. uh, when Tara asks Brian what character she is, do me a favor and close Brian's laptop. I, I think that's a terrible idea. I think. Ah, uh, got you. All right. I'm on it. You guys got to send prizes to the fans. Uh, yes. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. We'll, 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 God damn right. right, Tara. That's a great idea. <laughs> Good. the ones that are making donations to the Hartman House. Woo! Yeah, hartmanhouse.org slash donate. Very demanding. All right, this Absolutely. is it. Absolutely. This is it to tie uh, the game. And that's why, uh, Garcia, right. you get you get that one. Uh, Jammer B, can you check uh, the next one to make sure that there is a red uh, a red line there? <laughs> he, says, he says there is. That means we're okay. going to go uh, We're going to get into the uh, Hartman House sponsored tinyurl.com slash NSFW Turkey final point. There we go. D D no, if this is the final point, this is the very last one we have, right? Which means we have to both Here. pipe in or we have to both shout. Oh, do you guys want to? No, I'll tell how about you guys write it down? Since okay. You have writing All right. Implemented. Done All and right. done. All right, I'm ready. I got, I got a utensil. I'm ready. Writing utensil. There's All also right. bonus uh, points. Don't forget the bonus points. This these time. are, this is for 8 billion points. All right. This is billion. the final one for All the right. 8 billion yes. points. And you have to guess what <laughs> the, the, uh, what the voice is. The as well. Write it down so you can't look at the chat room. Okay, okay gotcha. Got All right. <laughs> All right, uh, Jammer B, show the script. Uh, Tara, you read the white, I'll read the green. Well, I guess you have better things to do than hang out with me and the twins. The funny thing is, I don't. <laughs> so, and you blew us up for black pool. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way. Oh, all right. Um, There's no way. Um, okay. Uh, can, can, can I get another read on that real quick? Yeah. Can we? Can, can I look at it again? Just give me the screen. Yeah. Do you, do you want to read it again? Or uh, no? Well, I mean, I would. I could listen yeah, to it no, all we, day we long. We can go ahead and read it again. Go ahead, Terry. You start start from the top. Well, I guess you have better things to do than hang out with me and the twins. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is, I don't. So then you blew us up for black people. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Oh, oh man! I wow. know. <laughs> All right. Wow. Write down. Uh, write down what you think it is. Oh uh, man! Oh no! Somebody showed it. Did he show it? Did he show it? I'm gonna put down my answer. <laughs> mm. And. <laughs> All right. Hang on a second. Uh. Wait, what did that even mean? I, I got it. I got it. All What's right. The first person to hold it up wins. There you go. I got it. It's right, it's right there because I definitely saw it. Uh, uh, the pumpkin <laughs> from Spider-Man was not the voice. <laughs> oh, the voice was not the pumpkin from Spider-Man. No. But that's all was, I got. It was. It was. I'm ops. just 
decided that if you guys don't get it right, you each have to donate 200 bucks to Hartman. <laughs> oh, I think that's a fantastic idea, Tara. Oh, my gosh. Um, I just decided the, that today was opposite laptop. day. Close so. the laptop. Uh, Okay, hold on. Um, uh, uh, I don't know. I don't, here's what I don't want to do is... Look. I don't want to embarrass myself. Yeah, I already did that, but let me see what... <laughs> I uh, well just donate 200 bucks. I, you know what? I think that's the safer yeah, thing. I do, I do. I just will you take? Donate. Will you take a combination of $200 yeah, and 100 no, I'll, a piece? I'll, I'll give you... Because yeah, we'll, I'll, we'll, do, I'll do yeah. 100 Yeah, I'll do, I'll do 100 I'll do can, 100 Can we both buy out? And yeah, just can we give, buy out? We'll both give you $100 right now. And it's a tie? Is yeah. that good? No. Uh, no. <laughs> If, if you're gonna if you're gonna each buy out for a hundred, then you still have to embarrass yourself. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll, get, I'll let you guys each do a hundred if you guess this one. Wait, is that Bubbles? I stopped oh watching now cartoons you have to give a month 300. ago. Three hundred. Now you have to give three hundred and go to the chat room and see who upset the fans are. Go on. Okay, hold on. We're we're going to the chat room right now. First of all, chat room is screaming that it was Omi from Shaolin Showdown earlier. Correct. Yes. All right, and then. Uh, they are also saying that the last one is, um, hold on, somebody said, uh, let me find it here, baby Morithirium? Is what? that is that anything? Is that even a thing? His name was Morpheus. <laughs> they're, uh, they're very angry at me, though, that is for sure. And in fact, they're refusing to say it, they're, but they are, they are taking requests, though. About, they're who, asking, about who it was? No, they're asking for, like, Harley Quinn, and they're just saying they're uh, upset and rage quitting against me. Well, you know, listen, unless, Tara, you did a, a character called We Are All Very Upset Right Now, I don't think that they're, uh, they're going to say it right now. <laughs> Look it. See, they're all very upset because y'all didn't do your homework. You uh, should have watched every show on the IMDb. Apparently, yes, absolutely. I'll, I'll tell you what, though. Uh, there is one show that, that I'm very, very familiar with because you did Zula on, on uh, Avatar The Last Airbender, right? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe? Do you not remember? Mm -hmm. Hold on! Whoa! Did she really? Whoa! Just, she went. She did. The... Wait, like, like, like. You don't even remember. You do so many voices, and and then and then you don't even remember what you did. You got brain melted there. Cause no, I, cause I did. Any of my shows so far, you're not recognizing anything. Okay. Well, no, no. Hold on. Don't turn it back on me. The question was like, did you, did you? This is one show that I loved very, very deeply, and a character that you're in it, and I was so excited that you're in it. I bring it up. You're like, I don't know. Look, I do a lot of voices. Mm -hmm. I can't be, I can't be held responsible to keep track of all the. All the voices I do. This is getting awkward. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look, I'm going to donate right now. I'm going to hartmanhouse.org, and I'm going to click on donate. Meanwhile, Justin's going to talk about the nice people who make NSFW possible. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about the fact that uh, Tara, our, our lovely guest, has made a tremendous discovery. That if you are going to tap into Brian's squirmy nature as a way to donate to charity, it is going to be an endless wellspring that will feed many <laughs> thousands of people. Uh, but uh, also, I want to recommend that folks, every, uh, nearly every single thing that Tara has, has voiced, it shows up on Netflix, Brian. Yeah, never heard, heard of it. This, uh, this here, uh, this, this uh, Netflix? Uh, uh, no, but it sounds delightful. It's, it's some kind of uh, three-headed hydra that, that blogs and shoots fire and also will be a taxi service, correct? I thought it was a sex move. The You're Netflix? Yeah. Are we Have off? Have you ever tried it, though, the Netflix? <laughs> the Netflix? Yeah. Once I was drunk. I didn't even remember what movie I watched the next day. That's, I, where, I that's, that's where you meet a girl, you get down to business, and then in one to two business days, you return and do it again. <laughs> I thought that was called Facebook. That's yeah. Uh, no, look. Of course, Netflix is no. the fastest. No, that's where you get to five thousand. You can't do it anymore. <laughs> that's right, because you, you have you hit your limit. Uh, look, and uh, Netflix is of course the greatest thing ever happened to the world. What are you watching on Netflix right now? Because I know you watch. You told me that you were watching Pulp Fiction every single night to go to sleep for a while, right? Yeah. Then uh, they, they they rotate a lot of stuff. Stuff comes on. Stuff comes off. I've been watching a lot of Arrested Development uh, lately, which is of course amazing. But really. Uh, you know, there's just it's a never-ending wellspring of content for which you can you can dive right in, like you were some sort of hillbilly boy in a backwater creek, just and spend your whole day there, splishing and splashing in the fine summer breeze. That's a metaphor for Netflix. <laughs>
<laughs> but okay, but look, this is a terrible ad read for Netflix because you're supposed to mention the fact that you can watch the movies on your Xbox 360, your PS3, your Nintendo Wii, your iPad, your iPhone, your Android, your PC. It's, it's ubiquitous. They got all kinds of platforms, and you have thousands of titles available for instant streaming, right? That's what you're supposed to be talking about. I don't know what this hillbilly splashing in the breeze thing is you're going for. No, because then you're going to have anamorphic animals, you know, like playing banjos and stuff. And that represents all the television content. Uh, and then you're going to have maybe a, a kindly old woman. This is okay. Look, I, this is the worst. This is the worst ad read ever because not only do you go completely off the rails talking about cartoon animals that don't even exist, but then you crap out and do some kind of flashback. Look at this weird robot. Pose That's him right there. Look at that. That he's frozen in, Ooh. and he's just like uh, everybody. Everybody do the justice. I'd like to mention, uh, Brian, that I love Netflix. Yeah, tell me why do you love Netflix? I love Netflix because Netflix first is made of of just fantastical amazingness because I can watch all of my favorite movies whenever I want. Okay, see, now that's how you do a oh freaking ad read. Here's the important thing. Head on over to Netflix.com slash twit, and you get your free 30-day trial. You can try out, uh, it's a, it's a, you can treat this like a big old fast scam. You sign up, get your 30 days, watch all the movies that you want, and then don't pay them nothing. Just say, oh, I'm sorry, I guess your service isn't for me. They don't care because you've already gotten a taste. And once you've had a taste of the sweet, sweet Netflix action, you will be back for more because... It's just that addictive. Netflix, it's highly addictive. Ding. So now we're waiting on uh, Justin to return here. Yeah, uh, Brian. <laughs> <and> Netflix. <laughs> All right, so Justin's back. Uh, what, what are we up to, Justin? I'm in the middle of logging into my PayPal so that I can pay $100 to Hartman House right now. Uh, well, absolutely. And, of course, we recommend everybody do that. Tinyurl.com slash NSFWTurkey. What you're going to do, folks, is you're going to send that money out there to the Hartman House. They're going to buy all sorts of Thanksgiving dinners for people who need it most. You don't need that. You're going to get a Thanksgiving dinner anyway. Someone yeah. else is out there saying, man, I want some turkey in my mouth. Right on. There's got to be a spell in here somewhere to fix them. Yes! <laughs> awesome. Very well done. Everyone's asking me to do it in Harley's voice. Mr. J, I hope nobody gets hurt. That is amazing. You want to know what? I just realized I uh, a couple of friends of mine are obsessed with Marvel versus Capcom, and I've, I've been and, and my one friend plays as X-23 constantly, so I've just been listening to you shoot power punches at my friend for the last two months. Yeah, those games are, um, they can be challenging sometimes to do punching and death sounds over and over for four hours. <laughs> but um, I don't know if we're still in the air, but I have to say the gaming fans are just amazing you know i think that they really feel like they're in the game with you and they connect with you and when i'm when i've got a session that's like a thousand cues like final fantasy or something like that i just think of the fans really getting in and, and feeling like they're part of it and going to comic-con and social media twitter and all that stuff really it's like so nice to connect with them so thank you guys for having me on now, now do you, uh, do you uh, when you're doing a, you're doing a, video, a video game, video game. Uh, here myself, I'm here for myself some reason. for some reason uh, when uh you, I can't. I can't. You try talking. You try talking. Mm. Well, it's not ha okay. Now it's not happening. Okay. Uh, <laughs> when you're recording a uh, a video game, do you have to record like just orders of magnitude more lines than for a uh, traditional narrative? Because obviously in video games, especially like a Final Fantasy thing, there's so many different possibilities and characters. You have to record lines that you know the odds are will never be heard by most players. It's insanely different like when you're doing an animated series first of all any voiceover session they have you up to four hours and for an animated cartoon it's usually you and all the other actors and it's so much fun and it's collaborative i mean if the guy ever sold the outtakes from the powerpuff girls and you heard what me and eg said to each other in our voices it would be very hilarious same with fairly odd parent sessions we're always very kibitzy and playing off each other and you get breaks in between because you're talking to each other and when you're doing a game it's just you for four hours straight and sometimes it can be um, vocally really challenging like screaming noises and death noises and um, even if it's like a whole pile of lines that you have to say maybe three times to have coverage and make sure it covers a whole bunch of different um, you know scenarios and something like Final Fantasy for example the scripts were like storyboards. If you've seen storyboards from films, sure, sure. they were so 
big. <laughs> and sometimes I'll meet the fans at Comic Con and they'll say, "Remember in scene?" <laughs> like, yeah, right. I, I can't remember. I'm so sorry, but I do know that in every moment. I'm picturing every moment in my head and how it should look. And any great voiceover artist will tell you they've heard people say, oh, isn't voiceover just reading? I can do that. And it's really not. It's imagining every moment and being in every moment so that the fans can connect to it. And like I said, feel like they're in the game with you and feel like they're part of it. And it's nice now that um, the game industry as a whole, you know, hires really great voice talent and voice directors, and I think it makes a difference. Now, does it drive you nuts that uh, some of the bigger blockbuster uh, animated features will go for a more popular actor's name to to kind of capitalize on their brand value rather than going with somebody who's more committed to the craft of storytelling? Let me think about In that. An yes! <laughs> <laughs> it drives me crazy. When they're good, Robin Williams and Aladdin, genius. Tom Hanks, I get it. When they're mediocre or, you know, a, a celebrity that kids might not care about, it really drives me nuts. I've been in casting sessions or rooms where they're like, oh, we got so-and-so from The Office. Like, you know, yeah. I'm sure kids don't care at all and they're paying more money. And I, I do think it's, I mean, I actually got the chance to um, direct this past year and really saw, um, how that all happens and you know a lot of times they'll be for promotional they'll want to bring in an on-camera celebrity which again kids don't care about and so at this last casting session I did I brought in you know Tom Kenny who does Spongebob and Kevin Michael Richardson on all these great voiceover performers and the cast then the producer said it's weird it seems like everybody that hugs you does really well hmm. <laughs> and I said that's because you're asking a tap dancer to do ballet and a lot of people coming from on camera that have never done animation really freak out when they see, like you said in the beginning, how versatile some of us are and how crazy we get and um, just knowing what to do in an animated session. Like if the line is, whoa, we're gonna know the difference automatically from someone falling off a building or someone thinking someone looks hot, you know? Right. <laughs> Whereas sometimes an on-camera person's like, Where, where's my eye line? <laughs> so, so you mentioned Tom Kinney, which, uh, which I, I first became hip to back when he was doing Mr. Show. And I, I remember finding it so hilarious to me that, that, you know, he's best known as being the voice of SpongeBob, whereas he did some awesomely filthy stuff on Mr. Show. Do, do you run into any situations where you have to watch uh, what you say or what projects you uh, get associated with outside of, of animated features? Because usually they're, you know, applied for children. Uh, probably like the dirtiest show, and I see your chat rooms talking about it, is um, Drawn Together, which was an animated version of the real world. And I know that you didn't see it because you didn't know any of my No, I show. definitely did watch Drawn T Together. I did on, see uh, yeah. Drawn Together. No, I love Drawn Together. I enjoyed that one. <laughs> and, you know, because I do so many kids' shows and I love to do kids' shows, it was really fun to get in the studio and sing with Cree Summer about making out with a black chick. Um, <laughs> and black chick's tongue was genius. And um, it's funny, when I first played it for my mom, she was in Canada, she started to cry. And she's like, this song is so beautiful. <laughs> And I'm like, all right, that's awesome. the words here, Mom. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so that's really, really fun for me. And um, I do have boundaries with that because so many of my fans are children. And, um, you know, a friend of mine was producing a film, and they like, they really want you for this horror movie, and there's some um, nudity in it. And I said, you know what, guys, I go have a great shoot. I just can't have 10-year-old girls downloading my boobs. Sorry. <laughs> <coughs> Uh, and now, yeah, I'll tell you what, you have, you have to have a code. I have the same thing. I don't want any of my 14-year-old girlfriend downloading my move. My <laughs> so so uh, when, when was the first awakening? Because uh, I know uh, you mentioned that you sort of came to understand that you could have a whole career doing animated voices. Was there a crystallizing moment when you're like, I love doing this and I could make a whole career out of doing exactly this? You know, um, I have to say when I booked... Hello Kitty, it was really, really exciting. That was my first job. And then I did Beetlejuice. Hopefully the, some of the fans will remember Claire Brewster and Bertha. Um, and um, some really cool, you know, American-based projects of things that I knew and that I was fans of that became animated series. And the more I booked it, the more excited I would get. And to this day, when I book something, um, I get excited. You know, I think when I booked Batgirl, my agent called and said, oh my God, you're her, you're the bat, you're the girl, you're Batgirl. And we screamed. And yeah. that's 
still the case, and I love what I do. And um, I think that shows with any animated show is they're fun to watch because the actors have a lot of fun and they, um, you know, so grateful for the work. Anything I do, I get excited. You know, I just recently started doing um, the Napoleon Dynamite animated series, which is um, all the original cast from the Napoleon Dynamite film and me. Wow. <laughs> so I booked that. I was like, oh, my God. And to sit in the room, you know, with John Heater and... Uh, Haley Duff and all these amazing talent. It's just so much fun and every script is laugh out loud funny. Um, so again, every every job is specifically exciting for me in a different way. Like I mentioned The Little Mermaid. I don't know what little girl didn't want to be The Little Mermaid, but um, I still have like the poster hanging in my room, um, in my childhood room in Toronto. And when I met Jody Benson, I burst into tears. <laughs> oh my like, gosh. You okay? And I'm like, I've just loved you for so long. And then, you know, getting to sing in the studio with her was totally surreal. So I knew like <clears throat> early on that it was a very uh, special part of the entertainment industry. Um, and I didn't really know how lucrative it would be. Like people used to say to me, oh, you're on the Rugrats. You must be making so much money. And I I said, I don't know. And the truth is, I don't. I, It's nice to have a nice paycheck, but I never know what... I'm making initially, and I just do this because I love it so much. So, was there, and, and I, if you don't want to name names, I totally understand. But was there a project that you started? You're like, well, this will go nowhere, and then you were shocked to see how how long it lasted or how successful it became. I'm usually really good at calling a hit. I knew Teen Titans was going to be incredibly successful because um, it was such a magical room. I knew Powerpuff Girls was going to be big, but I didn't know how big. You know, when we first started out, I'm like, this is hilarious. We're being chased by broccoli. And then every kid had the backpack. So um, I didn't know that that was going to be, you know, I didn't know that um, My Little Pony was going to take off so much. And Holy crap. It's like a phenomenon, this yeah, pony thing. All over Twitter with the bronies and the um, adult fans that are like, I'm sorry, I have to admit I'm a fan. I'm like, I love that you're a fan. I, I mean, when I was a kid, I had a bunch of My Little Pony toys. So, um yeah, I didn't know that that was going to be as big of a hit as it was. And then I've got shows that I thought would continue forever, um, like Symbionic Titan, which you guys don't know, but my No, actually, I do. I do. See, <laughs> what's funny is all the ones you say I don't know, because I see the ads for that one while my daughter watches Boomerang all the time. <laughs> so, yeah, I kind of thought that was going to go on for a long time, because um, Gandhi Tartakovsky, who was one of the producers and creators. And Samurai worked, Jack, yeah show Samurai Jack and Powerpuff Girls and Dexter's Lab and I, I really thought that was one of the shows that was going to keep going and you know you just never know what's going to keep going Teen Titans I get fan mail every day please can we have more Teen Titans and I wish that was in my control because truthfully it was so much fun to do and a lot of times I think the fans get disappointed when there's a show they love that doesn't keep going and even Chowder which you know you didn't know Truffles um, that was incredibly fun to do and i thought we'd get another few seasons out of that but you never know what's going to keep going yeah yeah i think if it were up to the fans <laughs> they would um they would keep going yeah it's cute wow. that my that the chat room thinks that's my bed that's my kid's bed that's <laughs> <laughs> it's a little tiny bed <laughs> <laughs> well I'll, I'll tell you what this uh it's, uh, it's definitely, you know, especially with like, the the animation thing, you, you got to figure that as we go forward, that it's something that will kind of come down in, in terms of how expensive it is uh, to make and, and voice talent, like you would kind of get more more opportunities. But um, I'm, I'm curious about the, the video game voiceover stuff that you were talking about, because it, it seems like as, let's say, opportunities like the feature film stuff have kind of gone on this trend of going with, with actors, the, the video game market, as that's gotten more... Uh, you know, high end, and, and you have these blockbuster titles that they are going for more kind of voice actors like you. Do you, I mean, do you see that those opportunities are increasing, or uh, has that happened more over the last ten years? I would say, like I said, it's nice, it's refreshing to see that they're going with union performers and um, really seasoned voice actors. In the beginning, it was harder to um, get the gaming industry to understand why it's good to have people that really know how to do voiceover and direct voiceover. And I think the gaming industry as a whole has changed and grown so much. And I think the nice thing is they've grown with that trend. 
And I do think that major on-camera celebrities tend not to do it because it's so much work. And you can't get frustrated. You have to keep going even when there's a thousand cues because you still have to make it believable for everybody. And so they tend to not have the time and not be able to schedule the time. And I do think it's really nice that they put that out there to um, voice talent. And you know, when I booked Harley Quinn, um, I worked alongside Arlene Sorkin in the animated series as Batgirl, and it was such an honor to step into that role. And then when I went to Comic-Con, and I'm sure some of the fans on your chat were there, uh, you can see these huge billboards for Arkham City. And even in, um, you know, in the streets of LA, there's huge billboards and the graphics are incredible and all the voices are incredible. And I, I just think it's so nice that they do continue to hire talented voice performers for that. Yeah. Well, it, it seems like something that's only getting only getting bigger, and and you know, it it, it very much seems like each release is, uh, you know, something that it's going to be a big a big opportunity. And obviously, the the conversation of whether or not video games are the new kind of blockbuster franchise movies is something that's gone on uh, forever. But it it almost in a way seems like it's uh you know like the voice actor's revenge. You know that that now there's this whole other thing that is uh you know not you know, on the radar for the, the John Krasinski's of the world, but but rather the domain for, for guys like, like you that can really kill it and do a great job. Yeah, it's nice. It's rewarding and it's fun. And I think it'll continue to go that way. And um, I get excited too. And there's so many things that I can't talk about yet. And um, it's funny. Oh, come on. Is- talk about something. You can break some news. No <laughs> one's fan- listening. It's they all funny- left because that episode was so goddamn awkward. <laughs> But they all like this stuff. They love this stuff now, but yeah, but they're, they're not. It's like four people. You can just break some news. It's fine. <laughs> no, I can't. Y'all, you come know, on. anyways, watch. They know. Look, there's a game I'm not allowed to talk about yet. They'll, they'll talk about it. That, it. Does it rhyme with Smar Wars, the old Republic? <laughs> it could. It could. <laughs> Maybe. Hey, uh, one of the questions that I'm seeing a lot pop in the chat room is uh, for somebody who wants to get started in this line of work, what, what advice do you give to youngsters getting started? I think it's really important, like I said, that people understand it's not just reading, it's um, acting. And so any kind of uh, classes you can get into locally, like acting classes, improv classes, singing classes, I can't tell you how many times I tap into stuff I learned in singing lessons, which I still take. Um, not just for singing in animated parts, which happens quite a bit, but to warm up your voice for something that might be vocally stressful. And uh, I did the I did a Second City stuff in Toronto, and all of that improv training really helps you in sessions. And then anytime you can get into um, a voiceover workshop or class where you get time to be on the mic to hear yourself and learn the different techniques. And I actually put out a CD, um, funny, it's like almost 10 years ago, because I was pregnant when I did it, called Voice Stars. It's Voice Stars with a Z dot com, and it's myself and uh, all the top voice talent and casting directors and show creators and SAG representatives and artists uh, talking about all the different little things you need to know about getting into the industry. Because so often people think, "Oh, I could do that," and to really do animation, you need to be in Los Angeles. So before someone moves there, they could do the Voice Stars, um, you know, CD write it in their home and at their computer in their pajamas and see, well, I don't think I could do this or I could because um, if you jump in too quickly and you're not ready, you quite often won't get another shot. Studios are expensive and they don't love to let in new people. I mean, there's always room for someone to raise the bar and for someone good to come in, but you don't want to try that until you're really at the top of your game. Because like I said, if you've wasted studio time or you seem insecure or you're not ready yet they you might not ever get another shot so you want to be ready well is that is that something that you think you know people could could take advantage of the fact that you know with with youtube and and uh you know internet distribution stuff it seems like it, it would be a a great place for someone to kind of cut their teeth and and really uh you know get a sense of what voiceover stuff is is all about in, in terms of getting involved in those projects if you were starting your career over now is it something that you would look to do or do you think that that's kind of giving away stuff uh, for free that you could take other sort of avenues to get where you are now? I'm so confused. What the question is... <laughs> if you were restarting your career today, would you do, uh, you know, internet stuff and YouTube stuff for free? 
or or would you you know try and uh, book gigs like you had to get where you are now? Uh, oh, I see. So you're asking like people that do stuff for free to kind of get their feet wet. Yeah, yeah, to get their feet wet and 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 get a little under under their belt. But <laughs> I think it's okay because truthfully, one of the reasons um, the greatest voiceover actors are so good is because they're doing it all the time. And there's techniques and there's things that you learn from being in the studio and from doing it over and over. So I don't think it's the worst thing. I don't think you can start a career that way. Like I said, it's better to get into classes, particularly um, voiceover classes that are taught by casting directors. Okay. Um, because a lot of people get their start that way. You know, uh, D. D. Bradley Baker, who is a genius voice talent, he's in everything you've ever seen. Um, took a class with Chris Ehrman, who is an incredible um, voiceover director, and she's like, who's this guy? And brought him in. So I wouldn't recommend taking from someone you've never heard of, uh, because unfortunately, as you know, in all parts of the entertainment industry, there's some people that aren't so great. Um, but if you can get into a class with someone that casts and can get you in front of a mic and get you gigs, I think that's a really nice way to go. Well, I'll tell you, I think there's there's a lot of people in the in the chat room now that really uh, you know uh, they 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 love your work and it seems like it's it's a it's a path that they'd kind of want to uh, want want to get into. So uh, uh, I'll tell you what it's it's very it, it's very very interesting. Me and Brian actually were hanging out. Who were we hanging out with uh, the other the other day when you were down here in in South Florida? The uh, the uh, guy oh, that's uh, the voice of the Crypt Keeper. Um, why am I blanking on his oh, name? Oh, Chad. Uh, no, 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 what? John Kasir. Yes. Wait. Crypt Keeper voice. Right. I'm right. I believe so. What? I didn't. I couldn't hear. What? Did, right. what didn't tell me what she said. I couldn't hear it. John. Uh, John. John's very helpfully saying like what she said was right. It sounded right. To me. John Casser. There you go. That's right. Yeah. Uh, but it, 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 it's funny that you know how much uh, you know that there is this. We were talking with him about how much there is this. You know this this group this like sphere of awesome voice actors that there's a reason why. Your guys' IMDBs are just so long and epically awesome because, well, because uh, you guys I'm keep working on all, all the same, or all, you know, different different stuff because you have such a great that's, reputation. That's the thing, too, is also um, versatility. You know, if you can change your voice and manipulate your voice and do a bunch of different characters and you're not afraid to look silly, like, I don't always look so cute <laughs> doing certain character voices. Um, yeah. And... If you're really um, able to play around and change your voice and manipulate your voice and do different accents and be willing to learn how to do different accents or impressions, it's really a plus. I'll often meet people that say, oh, I really want to do cartoons. People tell me I have a good voice. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. It's not about having a cuckoo voice. Yeah. You know, it's about acting and bringing it to the table. And if you only have one voice, I'm not saying that it's impossible to have a career, but the people that are versatile will definitely work more within the animation industry within that core group of people that you see all the time i'm sure you know when fans it's so nice now with social media and the internet because i'm sure when animation first started people didn't know how to connect with their favorite voiceover actors and now someone can say oh i really love the voice of bubbles or buttercup who does that and they can find out who who does those voices and follow those people and they can see how versatile people are and they're like, oh my God, that I can't tell you how many times I get your Terrence from Foster's Home and Bubbles on the Fairly Odd, like, you know, all these different um, sort of ranges and character voices that people are, you know, like like on your chat when you didn't know who Truffles was or Omi was, they knew. <laughs> oh God, yeah, no, I'll tell you what, we, uh, the, 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 the chat room experience on this show, yeah, we, we have a very, we're lucky enough to have a very dedicated and loyal fan base, but uh, we dev it's very rare that in our chat room, especially the unfiltered chat room, that we kind of get over overrun by anybody, but the bronies came to play, God damn it! Holy I love the bronies! The bronies were killing it. Uh, and, and uh, you know, you, you definitely, it, it's, it's so interesting what you were saying about the different kinds of fan bases in between the video game stuff and uh, something with with a, such a massive current cult following like uh, My Little Ponies has uh, it's 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 really awesome to get to see that reaction. They're asking me to thank them as re as uh, Raven. Oh, dude! I yeah, mean, I mean certainly. Yeah. You have to, they donated. Yeah, you have to. Well, I mean, only if everybody right. promises to go to tinyurl.com/turkeynsfw, which of course donates money to the Hartman House giving folks in Los Angeles on 
uh, Thanksgiving, the, the, the dinner that, uh, that they All need. Right, you can is, make it happen. This one, we got one tweet from the Hartman House saying uh, that the uh, uh, Thomas Deal deserves a shout out because he, uh, he gave the $166 to take us over $1,000. Uh, I think we think we plowed past that, but but I don't know if you can give a shout out to Thomas Deal. All right, this is Raven to Thomas Deal and everyone else that donated to Hartman House to feed the people that want to eat their turkeys. I mean, I don't really want to eat turkeys. I think it's disgusting. So hopefully they can also bring in some tofurkey. Nice. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Excellent. And also uh, Benjamin Puga, P-U-G-A, donated $50. Is he a Raven guy? Uh, I don't know. It doesn't say here. I'm just getting the stuff uh, third hand here. Uh, so I'll I... rely on the chat room. Benjamin what? P-U-G-A. So I'm going to say P -P 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 Puga? Benjamin Puga donated some money too. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, all right. Well, hey, man, uh, I guess, uh, jo Justin, I got to make it back uh, because we're, we're shooting scam school tomorrow. So I got to wrap things up. By the way, Butch said to say thank you and thank you to everyone. And thanks to you guys. Dude, thank you a million times over. Butch is the best and you're the best. And we appreciate you guys hanging with us. Happy you want toot, 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 toot. See you want toot. Do you remember toot? <laughs> <laughs> it's so well, good to uh, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, thank you again, uh, Tara. And, and you know, listen, we have a we have a very, very weird show, and uh, it, it's kind of kept very weird, uh, you know, because sometimes it works and sometimes it's you know very, very awkward. So thank you for braving, uh, braving it. Everyone to do a recording for Penny. Oh, that's my daughter Penelope. So oh. if, uh, if if you could do a a, a, a Timmy voice, that would be, I think she would really dig that. But her name's Penelope, and. Uh, uh, and her sister is Josie, and Josie just had a birthday. Oh, how old did she turn? Uh, she turned. Josie turned four, and Penelope is seven. All right. Well, does Josie like uh, Wow Wow Wubsy? Uh, well, I I know I definitely caught them watching Fairly Odd Parents last night. Cool. I wish Penelope's dad was just a little bit cooler. And Josie, happy birthday! I hope Cousin would want to bring you some cool stuff. <laughs> Oh my God, she is going to be so excited. That is awesome. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Tara. I'm going to go ahead and pack on up, but thank you guys. Uh, that was a freaking blast. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. And uh, if you're in the San Francisco Bay Area, why don't you come out and join us for a scam school shooting? We're going to be at the Mars Bar tomorrow night. Uh, and I'm going to be in my house all day, so uh, if you're planning on robbing me, uh, don't try it because I'm here. <laughs> What I'm saying is I need to donate, and I'm not going to finish this show until I've donated my $100. And so I'm asking you to take charge while I actually do my donation. Gotcha. Listen, folks. Um, is there a PayPal address that they can just uh, straight up put into their little PayPal account? I don't know. We'll find out. It says here Hartman House, and I'm trying to donate the $100. But uh, uh, don't worry. I got, I got this all figured out. Justin's going to just... Uh, I, do, I, I, I do want to let everybody know that it's tinyurl.com slash turkeynsfw. We got it a little backwards... And dyslexic uh, before, so it's uh, NSFW or tinyurl.com slash turkey NSFW if uh, you want to donate. And hopefully, uh, you know, we've, we've made uh, we made, made a real difference. Uh, Tara, thank you uh, so much. You know, this is a, a show that really uh, relies on, on a lot of, uh, you know, spur of the moment ridiculousness. And, and uh, thank you for being a good sport with us. Hopefully we've been able to, uh, to, to do a good job for you. Okay. I mean, I'm very confused <laughs> about what's going on, but you know what? I'm here. I'd like to see that chat room. How do I get into the chat room? Uh, if you head on over to nsfwshow.com, you can click on the chat. It'll come right up there. There we go. And now I finally donated my, my $100 of, of poor voice analysis shame money, which I'm being told. Uh, there you go. So you got, you got to donate as well. I got to log in. Yeah, you got to log in. I just, that's why I wanted just the... Uh, the the names that so you just go yeah into the, no 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 to, to the PayPal and, and go ahead and donate and directly ping ping absolutely uh, all right so hey uh, Justin do we have a do we have a music guest but I know we also have uh, sponsors to talk about uh, yes we do Brian Ford Motor Company yeah they uh they they go ahead and uh, they they put the internet in your car they stole the internet at gunpoint and they put it in your car if you buy a new Ford vehicle uh, how is that possible sir it's uh, not like you turn you could... your 
drive around and make your car into a Wi-Fi hotspot or nothing. Tell you what, you think that's a lie? Shut up and jump into a river full of sharks. <laughs> because that's what your life is worth if you think that that's impossible. Your lack of imagination has ruined you, and you will never know the full glory of the uh, Sync and My Ford Touch featuring Wi-Fi connectivity. Folks, in a 2012 Ford Focus, you can turn your GD car into a GD hotspot. Ford.com slash technology is where you're going to be. And I was told initially to talk about the fact they're throwing a kick-ass barbecue at Twit. And then they said, don't talk about it because it's already sold out. And you can't come even if you wanted to. Well, I'm here to tell you, folks, that you can still look at it from afar and wish you were there. <laughs> and look at all the amazing stuff that's happening with Ford and Twit and barbecued meats at Ford.com slash technology. Uh, yeah, man, dude, uh, they, they, they got the apps that'll actually read out your tweets that come to you. You can get all your app replies. You could, uh, I believe, dictate responses. Is that right? Absolutely. And you want to know what? It, it's, it's built on this, uh, this, this open platform that basically it just, it's going to grow as people want to make more awesome stuff for it. So it's not like what you see now is going to be what you're going to have forever. It's, it's going to continue to grow and evolve and be a fantastic platform for you and your Ford, your Ford vehicle. If, if your Ford vehicle could talk, it, you would just talk to it and share secrets, and you and you just you know you'd be your best friend. You'd call your other best friend and say, "I don't need you anymore. I got a new 2012 Ford Focus." <laughs> what you're saying is, uh, uh, next week I'll be hosting NSFW with a Ford motor vehicle. I'd be like, "What's going on, uh, Ford vehicle?" We're like, "I'll be here for you, Brian. I'll never have my internet crap out in the middle of the show three times." And then it'll say, "Oh, did Danny Garcia just donate a hundred dollars to Hartman House?" And I'll say, "Yes, he did." <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Explain that future, sir. Yeah, it sounds like your cars are real suck-ups. <laughs> <laughs> real kiss asses. Uh, hey, man, so uh, do we, we have a music guest lined up for today? Uh, Brian, we absolutely do. Uh, Jammer B, do we have the songstress on the line? Calling now. Calling her oh, now? And, right. and what can you tell us about her? Uh, Jackie Lipson is joining us. She, uh, you can go ahead and find uh, her out there on the, uh, the the Facebook by going to Jackie Lipson, L-I-P-S-O-N, or her YouTube channel, Lipson18. She's going to be playing uh, a song of her own creation called Forever. But uh, but one more time, let's get all the info out there with uh, with, with, with Tara Strong and the Hartman House, hartmanhouse.org. Uh, Org. Yeah, Tara, I can almost, I can verify now that we've crashed HartmanHouseFoundation.org. Uh, <laughs> hold on, let me do uh, HartmanHouse.org. Let me see if it's coming. Yeah, no, I think we killed your website. But don't worry, it'll be back up by the time this actually comes out, though. It's it's collapsed under the pile of money we've thrown on it. <laughs> uh, but, but Tara, how long have you been working with Hartman House? Uh, how long have I been working with Hartman House? Um... You know, I can't remember. I've been doing Fairly Odd Parents for uh, a little over 10 years now. And um, every time they, you know, try to raise money for housing or for um, feeding people or anything, they're just such a fantastic organization. So anytime they're doing anything, I donate. And um, also, uh, I invented a baby bottle, which unfortunately <laughs> we're not yet. It's um, babababy.com, and we're going to donate a um, portion of our proceeds to their organization as well. I mean, if you go on their website and look at everything they do for people in need and build homes for people, and it's just extraordinary. I mean, there's, you know, families with five, six kids that have nowhere to put them, and Hartman House goes all over the world and helps people out. And I think um, this push to feed people right here in California for Thanksgiving shouldn't be too hard. So I'm really appreciative that everyone's making a shot at donating. Well, we definitely uh, appreciate you slumming with us because uh, you guys are fantastic, and that's fantastic news. And I can't verify that both of us have. I just checked, and our donations have gone through. Yes, yeah, so that means uh, I know we are we are definitely over $1,000 for this episode. So Whoops. it's all money that's going to go to a really, really good cause. And uh, and and, by, and for everybody, you know, this is the same organization that, that helped uh, the Joplin families uh, a couple a couple months ago. So, I mean... It's totally legit. They, they really make uh, you know, every dime count, and they're certainly going to do that this holiday season. Awesome. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, hey, uh, do, we, do we, have, we have her on the line? Let's bring her in. Take it away, Justin. Hi, uh, Jackie. Uh, this is Jackie Lipson. Uh, she actually, I'll tell you what. This is, folks, if you are a singer, songwriter, you perform, 
music on YouTube or on the internet at all, this is what you got to follow at Schwood and at Justin R. Young on Twitter. Because every once in a while, we we just uh, we want to throw it out to uh, all of Chat Realm and see uh, you know who's got talent and wants to come on. I was lucky enough to find Jackie earlier today performing forever. Ladies and gentlemen, Jackie Lipson, take it away. Thank you. By the way, for everybody listening uh, in the final podcast, uh, you, you said you were recording locally right there, Jackie, right? Uh, make sure it worked. <laughs> yeah, make sure to save that because we got a little bit of artifacting over the Skype, but, uh, oh. but the local recording will sound great. We'll drop that right in. 
The local recording didn't record. Ah, well, then we'll fake it oh, after no. the fact. I don't know. Well, the recording should be online. So. All right, done and done. We'll fix that, no problem. Uh, dude, thank you so much. So, so tell us a little bit about your music. Um, well, I'm kind of getting started right now. I'm uh, getting together a band, but um, I mean, I'm, I live in New York City. I'm hoping to play out uh, more than I have. And yeah, I'm just writing and playing and, and hoping to make something of it. And so uh, where can so, people visit to see more of your stuff? Yeah, uh, you can go to JackieLipson.com, um, and at that website is all of the links to my other sites and recordings and everything, and all the recordings will be connected there. Awesome. Uh, and and uh, Jackie, where, where can people follow you on, on Twitter? And we're getting a lot of people in the chat room asking where they can see you live. Um, well, you can follow me on Twitter at, at Jackie Lipson. Um, all one word, and it's uh, I will post on there when I'm going to be playing shows live, um, probably open mics and stuff like that. Hell yeah! Well, I'll tell you what. One of the, my favorite things about NSFW show since we started having musical guests is finding, you know, awesome people that uh, that you know uh, have not uh, really found as big of an audience as they will uh, at some point, and and kind of connecting them with with the the Diamond Club and all the NSFW fans. So. Uh, thank you so much for coming on, Jackie. Thank you for having me. All right, done and done. Then, uh, then I guess, uh, I guess, man, what's left to do, Justin? I think we covered all the bases. We, we I think it's another mistake-free episode in the can, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, as Spider-Man's pumpkin always says, it always works out on NSFW show. Uh, all right, uh, that is it. Jackie, video, Jammer B. Uh, wait, say that again, Jammer B. I need video. Oh, yeah, he's getting the video. All right, look, you guys know where to check us out. Head on over to NSFW Show. I'm sure the future episode will be 100% mistake-free. Make sure to follow Daniel Garcia at Garcia Magic. Make sure to head on over to HartmanHouse.org slash donate. Thank you so much, Tara Strong. You're the best person who ever lived. That was amazing. Thank you, guys. Thanks to everybody that donated. Absolutely. Yeah. Over over 1200. 1200 bucks. Uh, it's a, a really good cause. Thank you to everybody. I've donated out of shame. <laughs> I donated pesos. So it was like 5 bucks. <laughs> it all translated out. Then to spend a single moment without Brian Brushwood. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tara. You're freaking awesome. That was delightful. Thanks, guys. Uh, okay, Justin, we got to. Uh, we, can we get word to Jackie to see if she could just record it again in front of? I mean, I'll, I'll talk to Jackie. Yeah, but I'll, I'll get her to record it again, and we'll just fake it all up. We we'll drop it in yeah. the. I mean, the, the good news is that the the video was all junky enough that we could just take any any. It was. We had we had like we had like Sarah Lane. Uh, problem where it was like she was like she was perfect she was like hd crystal clear and she was like thank you everybody and then as soon as like the first chord hit like it just automatically went into 1980s like you know we've yeah. in, we've invented video conferencing here's my count tony edit this out oh, God. Oh, i should probably include the audio eh <laughs> This was. This is going great. <laughs> Tony, you know what to do. Working great. Drink it out of his cup. <laughs> we aren't having much luck. Here, bring it in like it's all action. Five, four, three.